Hi again and guys and welcome to episode 34 of Weekend Warriors, the review series for Gran Turismo sports cars, sports coupes, luxury coupes and basically everything in between. Now this particular vehicle may seem a little bit strange to include in this series because it's essentially a Honda Integra Type R, but not really because this is actually the Acura Integra. Now, what's the difference? Well, in its essential underpinnings, not much at all. It is just another version of the Integra. But this is not a carbon copy of the Integra. In fact, this vehicle in some ways is similar to how the Pontiac GTO compares to the Holden Monaro. Both vehicles share very similar mechanicals, very similar visuals, and you could even believe that they're exactly the same underneath. But, for whatever reason, they have totally different tuning levels. Likewise with this Integra compared to the Honda version. Now, I have to say I've seen a few DC2 Integras and many of you guys who have been around on the channel for a bit longer will know the love that I have for the DC2 Integra. It's one of my favourite cars, definitely my favourite front wheel drive car, and so this particular model surely isn't really going to offer that much of a difference compared to the Honda version. Maybe it'll be a little bit cheaper or a little bit more expensive, but really could it be anything more than just a different looking version? Well, actually, no. It's a lot more than that. Now, speaking of the visuals, it does, of course, look different to the Honda version. It has the projector-style headlamps, which, personally, I'm, to be honest, not a fan of at all. I do not like the front end of this car. I vastly prefer the Honda version with the normal headlights. I think it's a far better-looking machine. I don't think this one's ugly. I just don't like it compared to the normal model. And so the visual, straight off the bat, will divide some people. I don't like it. Doubtless some people do. What though about the spec? Does it actually have any significant differences? Well, interestingly, it actually does. And they're not small differences. Now, this car also has a naturally aspirated 1.8 litre engine, like the Integra. But, for some strange reason, Polyphony don't allow you to tune this car as heavily as the Honda version or at least you don't get the same results. For instance, it stays naturally aspirated and only puts out 342 horsepower. The Honda versions put out a lot more than that. It also puts out 210 foot-pounds of torque and the weight is also higher than the Honda version at 1,002 kilos. Whereas with the Honda versions, you're looking at just over 900 kilos, and some of them even go below 900, the older model in particular. So why is it so much heavier and so much less powerful? Well, to be honest, I don't know. The only thing that I can think of is favoritism toward the Japanese company, which, considering it's a Japanese game, isn't too surprising, but it's still kind of disappointing, considering that it's just another version of the same vehicle underneath. And although there are doubtless differences between the two due to regulations, etc., it just would have been nice to have been able to upgrade this car to be at least close to how good the Honda version is, at least on paper. Now, as far as price, you're looking at just under 26 grand. So, you're looking at roughly the same price as the Honda version. So, the question is, why buy it? Well, actually, that's a very good question, because, honestly, there's not much reason to. It's not a bad car, but the Honda is just better in every significant way. This is one of those vehicles which suffers, unfortunately, to some degree by what I would term the chrome line issue. And that is that it just isn't necessary because of what they've made it like. If the chrome line vehicles were genuinely better, which they easily could have been, then I would like them. But the reason why I don't like them, so much so that I made a series about them, is because they just feel like totally wasted potential. Now this car doesn't suffer as much from that issue, which is the reason why it's not being featured in that series. For me to feature a car in that series, the Boat series, it has to be virtually totally useless and just a complete waste of money and time. This car is not a total waste of money and time. In fact, I would say that this car has one very significant technical advantage. And it's such a tiny, semantic advantage to have, but still it's good to know if the circumstances arise where it may prove useful to some of you guys to know this. And that is, this is one of the best 
maybe even the second best to the Ford Focus RS, American front-wheel drive track cars in the game. Because to say that this car is American is really a semantic, because it's not an American car at all, in the same way that Infinities and Lexus models originally were not American vehicles either. They were just rebranded Japanese cars. But the semantic point remains that technically this is an American market vehicle, and as such, you can legitimately use it as one. Now, it doesn't have the trackability of the Ford Focus RS, which is probably the best front-wheel drive American car in the game, and it doesn't have the sheer straight-line performance of the Dodge SRT4, which is one of the fastest front-wheel drive cars in the game. But what it does have is a good balance of everything. It's not insanely fast in a straight line, but it's pretty good. The handling is, well, a DC2 Integra, so of course it's going to be great around corners, and even with the extra weight, which you can feel, it's still a superb car as far as handling goes. And although the value for money definitely isn't as good as the Honda version, it's a useful vehicle to keep in the back of your mind. I wouldn't necessarily recommend that everyone should buy this car, but it is a car which could prove useful for some people, not for everyone, but for some, under certain circumstances. And that's why overall I would say the car does have a very limited amount of kind of niched use and ability, but for those who need that ability, it's certainly a useful vehicle. Overall, is it a bad car? Definitely not. Do I love it? Definitely not. Would I recommend buying it? To some. Overall, I wouldn't not recommend buying it, it's just not really necessary. If you want this car, and you want it in its best form, just buy the Honda version. Unless, of course, you're an Acura fan specifically. But that's it overall for this particular pick. I'll see you guys next time, and as always, thanks for watching.